Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I wanted to go over a little tool that I've had here on my workbench for quite a while and I just have never done a video on it and I can't really explain why. So I figure this is a pretty good opportunity, today's a good day. So let's go ahead and take a look at this VCC short circuit detector. I know, it is that complex. There's only two buttons on it, but let's take a look. All right, guys, this right here is the VCC voltage injector. And it's kind of a hit or miss with this guy because it does have maybe some quality issues. These buttons are metal, and because they're metal, they're weighted. And I've noticed even setting it down that it resets itself. It can be a little finicky, but when you need this for small circuit boards, it is absolutely fantastic. You can see I've actually got it charging right now. Normally it is battery powered, completely independent, and it's got one jack that comes out, and that would be a ground clamp for your ground plane, and then this is your probe that is going to inject current into your board to help you find those short circuits. Now first off, why would you even need something like this? I mean, I have had other videos where I use a regulated DC power supply, which is still my favorite because with the regulated DC power supply, I can adjust the current. Whereas on this guy, I, I haven't yet found a way to do it. And the manual that comes in the box is absolute garbage, but it's really not that difficult to figure out, I guess. So anyway, um, what would you use this for? Well, this helps you locate shorts. What would I mean by that? Well, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and hook this guy up. Like I said, it's got two buttons. One's power on, and one of them is activate, which activates current to this probe. So the reason that you use a voltage injector is because there are sometimes circuitry and protection circuits that are built into your circuit board that will prevent it from turning on. And motherboards, PCBs, a lot of cell phones, stuff like that, um, sometimes even motor drivers and stuff have protection circuits built in. So if there's something wrong, um, it will shut down. And from there, you just can't figure out what's wrong. So you got to change out like the whole motor driver. Well, this type of circuit is useful if you pop something like this little fuse right here. And fuse is due to an overcurrent situation. And that's, if you ever pop a fuse in a circuit board, there's a reason for it. Fuses don't just get old and start popping. There's almost always a reason for it. So I could hook this up to my regulated DC power supply and check to see how much current is coming across this fuse right here. Um, but this little guy is just a much more portable solution. So this thing has three or four voltage settings. Let's see down here. We got 1.2, 1.8, 3.0, and 3.8 volts. The reason you have different volts is because you have different power rails on your board. So you'll have one power rail that will power your microcontroller, which will be your lowest voltage. You'll have a uh, power rail for things like your motor drivers or your motor switches. And those are going to be your higher volts, like your three, four, five. And what you always want to do is you want to inject the voltage that's just under what the rail is rated for. So let's say my uh, motor drivers are rated at five volts. I look up the chips on the um, data sheet. I'll find what their uh, VCC is. So let's say it's five volts. I would switch this to 3.8 volts or three volts, maybe even 1.8 volts, because you do not need a lot of voltage. We are not powering the board to turn it on. What we are doing is we're injecting voltage into an area, and we're then going to find which component is heating up, and that is going to be your short. Now this is kind of a rudimentary method for doing this, but without a schematic, this method is very effective. So here's how we do it. Um, right now I've got it on 1.2 volts, which is the lowest voltage, and I have it grounded. The motherboard right here, the circuit board, you can see that the board itself is grounded to the chassis. So that's okay for me to ground my voltage injector over there. Okay, let's turn this guy on. 
uh, you can see that it is on for injecting. Now, the best way to do this is you find the region of the board that's probably giving you problems, and from there we're going to inject. If I pop this fuse over here, I would go into the power section of the board, which this is definitely power and voltage regulation over here. And I would read up on which pin is VCC on these chips. And when you find the VCC pin, you are then going to place this probe on that pin and hold it. And one of the other chips or one of the other capacitors or resistors floating around here is going to get hot. Now, a lot of components can short. You can get shorted capacitors. You can get shorted uh, surface mount capacitors. You can get shorted resistors. You can get shorted diodes for sure. And any of these components could be suspect. One of these could be any of these guys, all right? So we inject voltage here at a chip, and everything that's on that power rail is going to be powered with this guy. And... You can see what happens if there is a short. Boop. See how it dies out? That is a protection to save the board and to save you. So once it goes out, you know, okay, this is definitely a short. Uh, we got it. And I have yet to completely figure out if this guy is defective. Because sometimes it works and it just powers through it. And other times it just shuts off like it just did. So I'm still on the fence about this. Maybe it's just this model. I've seen other people with YouTube videos that use these. And that's why I got it is because it's a nice portable solution instead of bringing whatever board all the way over, connecting it to the regulated DC power supply. But you could see how it would work. So if it was in the power section over here, if it's in the motor driver section, or uh, I'm on 1.2 volts, I could look up this chip right here, scratch this sticker off, look it up, and find the VCC pin and any one of these traces that are out a little bit, I would then go ahead and try and plug in there with this guy and inject voltage and see if my chip is getting hot. Now, the way that you find a chip that's getting hot is you take a Q-tip with some rubbing alcohol and you put the rubbing alcohol all in that vicinity and then you will see which chip it's evaporating from first and people also do the finger check as long as you don't have like AC mains coming into your board that is perfectly fine to go ahead and probe around as long as you don't have a high voltage circuit but go ahead and put your finger on chips and see which one is getting warm but the other safe method is going to be using a q-tip with some uh, rubbing alcohol and just plop it around get a good look at it see which one's getting hot Remember, it could be on the back side of the board. So there are components often on the underside of boards. Just remember that. So if this board here blew this little fuse, I would then inject voltage, which this guy, I would go ahead, we'd go ahead and crank that guy all the way up to 3.8 volts because I do believe that this is a 12 volt power supply. So 12 volt comes in over here and then it regulates it down to your 3.3 volts or one and a half volts for this chip. And your drivers are all going to have, you know, their own voltage, which is probably going to be pretty close to 12 volts. So um, anyway, that would be my voltage injector. And go ahead and look up voltage injectors on YouTube. You'll see other videos where people are actually using them to find uh, actual shorts. I did have to get this imported especially from China. They're kind of rare over here because we often will use regulated DC power supplies instead. But it is what it is. Uh, as for a little tool, portable, easy to use. I like it. Uh, this one here, like I said, might have some quality control issues. Maybe I'll open it up, take a look, and maybe fix that problem because it wants to reset. If, if I move it around on my desk or something, you know, I'll just put it down and it'll reset. And that's kind of annoying. And I think that's because of this button being so weighty. See? That button being so heavy, just setting it down kind of resets it. But you can use it on multiple circuits. Like this one here is a uh, USB powered. This is the Bus Pirate, which I use for hacking the uh, Carl Zeiss microscope bulbs. I have a couple videos on that. But you can see the chips right here. Each of these chips, it's very easy to go and get a data sheet for. 
Same with this guy over here. Go ahead and get your data sheet or I can inject voltage right over here. You see that? Plus three volts, bam. I can just inject right there, bypass this whole guy over here and uh, power regulators for um, USB. And I can go ahead then and do the alcohol test and see which chip is getting hot or which driver is getting hot. But anyway, uh, guys, that is the Mechanic VC04 voltage injector. It's a pretty cool little tool. And maybe if you're experimenting around with little boards like cell phones, devices that are battery powered or USB powered, which is five volts, it's wonderful. So I recommend it, guys.